better? Check, check, is that better? Okay.
Well, good morning, everyone. And how are we this morning? Let everybody have a great 4th of July. Yeah, did you get the barbecue and be with the family? And to add what Pat said last week, blow stuff up? Oh, well, <laughs> we tried, but it rained on our parade that night in Wagner. <laughs> so you might notice that I'm uh, sporting a camp shirt and my uh, name medallion. So if you don't know me, there it is. Um, we got the privilege of taking our grandkids to the ABC camp this last weekend, and it was hot, but it was a lot of fun, and our kids thoroughly enjoy it where they want to go back. So that, I give you know, uh, kudos to the, the counselors and all the staff. They just did a wonderful job, and if you have never been to St. Crispin's, you need to go. Uh, if your kids have never been to St. Crispin's, they need to go to camp. So. Uh, that was the first time I got to experience that, and it was wonderful. So, all right, so welcome everyone, and welcome everybody that's watching on Facebook. We're glad you're here. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us of all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O oh Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will ever. Amen. Hallelujah. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Know this, the Lord himself is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Your right hand is full of 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated to hear the word of God. Our first lesson today is a reading from the second book of Samuel. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron. And King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 40 years. At Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And at Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years David occupied the stronghold and named it the City of David. And David built the city all around the Milo inwards. And David became greater and greater, for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. The word of the Lord. We're going to say this together, a song of the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will you were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God. From every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom, a priest, to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, he worship and praise, dominion and splendor, ever and ever, evermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Second reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, To keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, 
and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter? the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. And if any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Everybody be seated. Well, again, good morning to everyone. 
I see that it is my turn to do the morning prayer. <laughs> and I am very happy to do it. Um, so I would like to sit, start off with a phrase from our passage this morning in 2 Corinthians. I think I got a ring. Strength and weakness. Think about that. Yep. Turn off your mic. It's, off. it's not on. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Are we better? Does that sound better? If we're ringing? Do I need to make it lower? <laughs> All right. So anyway, let's go back to the phrase strength and weakness. Think about that. I am ringing. Um, our passage today in 2 Corinthians 12. I want to really focus on that this morning. Because if you think about strength and weakness, that's really not what, as a society, that is not how we think as us crazy humans, is it? We don't think that weakness is a strength. But Jesus said strength and weakness. So I would like to read you, as Pat did last week, I took the path of less, least resistance, and I got one of the sermons at work. And this is from a very, very good uh, passage. And I had her name. Reverend Dr. Amy Richter. She's from Quebec, Canada. And I read through it a few times, and I thought, this is what is really interesting. So I wanted to read this to you this morning, and maybe we could talk just a little. All right, so it says, Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. Power made perfect, not in strength, but in weakness, says Jesus. And again, as a society, we don't think about weakness being a strength. We're always thinking about pumping iron or working out or eating right. We're always wanting to be strong. So this is kind of, you know, something that we don't understand or a lot of people may not understand that Jesus is saying, I, I want your weakness so I can be strong. Power made perfect in weakness, not in strength, but in weakness, says Jesus. Whenever I am weak, then I am strong, says St. Paul. We should have known this would be true when God chose to enter human life, not as a king, not as a conqueror, but as a baby. Sure, the heavenly host of angels was present at the blessed event, but they were singing peace to God's people on earth, not, look out you people, now you're in trouble. God's love took on flesh and dwelt among us as a baby, vulnerable, utterly dependent, weak, our clue that God would use weakness to show strength. Of course, God was doing that long before Jesus was born. Take, for example, the great story of Gideon, who was told by God to fight against the Midianites. So Gideon starts ready. The 32,000 troops were in his battle for the camp he had. Not so fast, says God. Too many people. That's too many. I can't let you win with that many people. Because if you do, you'll say, look what we did. Aren't we great? Instead of giving me the credit. So Gideon said to the people, anyone who doesn't want to fight, you can go home. 22,000 people left. They didn't want to fight. They said, great. I don't want to fight. And went home. So Gideon said, okay, Lord, I got it down to two-thirds, down to 10,000 people. Better? God said, no, nope, still too many. Here, try this. Take down them all down to the water hole, and we'll sift some of them out there. So Gideon took the 2,000 or 10,000 troops down to the water, and God said, everyone who just bends down to the water and laps up the water like a dog, put them in one group, and then everyone who kneels down and scoops up the water with his hand and drinks from their hands, put them together in another group. 300 men drank water like thirsty dogs. Everyone else drank water more politely with cupped hands. Gideon said, he must have thought, man, we got it now. Okay, we, we whittled them down another 300. That leaves me 9,700. Still a very good-sized army. Great, said God. 300. Yes, that is the right size. When you go into battle with just 300 men and not the most, classy or impressive, shall we say, because they're the ones that got down and lapped water like a dog. The others always heard this story one time that the reason why they were cupping their hands and trying to drink water is because they were watching, they were keeping their eye out for the enemy. They are always alert. So he chose the 300, though. 
So, shall we say that you win? Everyone you will know it's really me, God, who should get the credit. Your weakness shall show my strength. And the whole story is in Judges 7, if you're interested in reading it. So, another story, think of David. Samuel is sent to the house of Jesse to anoint one of Jesse's sons to be the king over Israel. When the first of Jesse's sons is brought before Samuel, Samuel takes one look at him and says, Oh, surely this is the guy. He's strong. He's handsome. This guy's got to be it. It's got to be the Lord's anointed. He will make a great king. But God said, Do not look on his appearance or on his height or his stature because I have rejected him. So he doesn't look on the outside. God does not look on the outside. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Six more of Jesse's strong boys went by. Tall, strapping young men, accomplished sons came before Samuel. Nope, that's not one. Neither one of them, the Lord said to Samuel every time. When the whole lineup had passed before Samuel, Samuel said, You got any other sons? Maybe someone who missed roll call? There is one more, Jesse said, but he's out watching the sheep. Get him, said Samuel. Well, he's not going to smell too good, said Jesse. Samuel says, God's got this thing for doing great things for the youngest and the smallest, and shepherds too, come to think of it. Sure enough, David stands before Samuel, and the Lord says, he's the one. In human weakness, God's strength is shown. The prophet Jeremiah put it this way. Thus saith the Lord, do not let the wise boast in their wisdom. Do not let the mighty boast in their might. Do not let the wealthy boast in their wealth. But let those who boast, boast in this, that they understand and know me, that I am the Lord. I act with steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Boast in the Lord. Boast that you have understanding to know the Lord, whose power is made perfect in weakness. And another story. Take Paul. By all accounts, Paul was an impressive man physically, you would think. <laughs> but one of the books of the Apocrypha says, and a book of Apocrypha means that it's not the canon of the Bible. It means it was another book that was written that was not accepted as its holy scriptures. But it says in this Apocrypha book, that uh, Paul lived, described him, uh, the way he lived, he described him as bow-legged, small in size, eyebrows that met, I think that means a unibrow, and, uh, and a very large nose. Paul himself says that some people say about him, his letters are weighty uh, and forceful, but in person, he's, not the, he's very unimpressive, and he speaks amounts, speaking amounts to nothing. But Paul didn't let this get him down, and he knew a thing or two about boasting. When he was still known as Saul, he could boast that he did really well in a Pharisee school, straight A's, top of his class, headed for great things. He had actually brought down several of those Christian heretics and was on his way to Damascus to round up a few more, actually several more. And, that, and add that to his list of accomplishments. He was a very proud Pharisee. When the risen Lord knocks him flat on his back, blinds him and gives him a right talking to about persecuting him, the Lord, when he hurts his brothers and sisters. Saul, totally disoriented, blind and incapacitated, has to be cared for like a baby for three days by the Christians he had planned to haul up the, the prison. Okay, says the Lord, now you're ready. Ready for what? More suffering. Shipwrecks, imprisonments, beatings, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities, sicknesses, and weaknesses. But all for Christ. So Paul is one of the most joy-filled and confident people on the planet. He had the power of Christ. Not his own power, but God's power to do God's will. To know and accept God's gift of grace. He got it and wanted everyone else to know that God's gift of salvation is free. And this word here, gratis, for meaning grace, 
There's nothing you can do to earn God's uh, love. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. You don't deserve it. You can only accept it. That's it. Kind of crazy. Kind of ridiculous. Who can love such a wild abandon, abandon as not to require a certain amount of accomplishment to get into God's kingdom? Self-earned. Worthiness. Deservingness. And this goes back to the stories we were reading with David. He wasn't the biggest guy there. God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weaknesses, weakness is stronger than human strength. This is what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 1. And God's weakness is stronger than anything else, visible or invisible. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Paul wrote, with affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Add your own. Cancer, divorce, unemployment, heartache. No, is the answer. Paul continued, In all these things we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's one of my favorite scriptures. When we are weak, we rely on the strength of God. We are strong. What does this mean for us? It means if God asks you to do something, God won't take, I can't do it for an answer. God already knows you can't do it. But God's not asking you to do anything on your own. In fact, if you try to do it on your own, you will fail. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me as Paul writes in Philippians. And finally, it means that we may not get what we want. We may not even get the kind of strength we want, even to do the things we think God wants us to do. Paul prayed three times in our scripture today that whatever it was he was suffering with might be taken away from him. God told him no. It was more important to learn the deep and abiding truth. Lean on God. And that doesn't mean you're going to go through the same things that Paul did that I just read. But it just means that you, in the way that you are, have a responsibility to say, God, I'm here. And in your strength, and in my weakness, you are strong. Amen. Okay. Please stand if you're able to say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of mercy. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. 
Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. And created us a clean heart, O God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have taught us to keep all our, your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and unite to one another with pure affection through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by the Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. The Prayers of the People Bound together in Christ in the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with one heart and mind to God our Father. We pray for peace from things that separate us from one another and for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the peace of the whole world and for the welfare of the holy churches of God, especially Good Shepherd Sepulpa, Institute of Anglican Theology, Montevideo, Uruguay, the Diocese of Colorado, the Diocese of Iowa, and the Church of South India. We pray for this holy gathering and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God. Lord, have mercy. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Sean, our presiding bishop-elect, Paulson, our bishop, Tom, our clergy, Catherine and B.J., our wardens, vestry, delegates, all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God, Lord, have mercy. We pray for the world and its leaders, our nation and its people. We pray for our leaders especially, Joe, our president, Kamala, our vice president, Josh, our congressman, James and Mark Wayne, our senators, Kevin, our governor, and Patrick, our mayor. Lord, have mercy. We pray for prisoners, for the oppressed, for all those in need or suffering, especially the Johnson family, Ronnie, Mike, John, Rose, Adriana, Fred, Stuart, Nancy, Thomas, Catherine, Jennifer, Patricia, Paula, Marlene, Alyssa, Kathy, Frank, Charlie, Junior, Wesley, Rana, Rob, Jean, Geneva, Glenn, Jackie, Ched, Frankie, Coy, Troy, Taylor, Jan, Deborah, those impacted by war and violence, all emergency responders, United States military, and those whose suffering is known only to God. And we pray for those who have died, especially Karen Hall, Lord, have mercy. And we pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. We pray for those in our family, especially Lori, Nick, Diane, David, Eden, Killian, and Scott. And for those who are traveling, Lord, have mercy. Remembering our most blessed Mary and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us greet one another in the name of the Lord.
motion for the fall holiday. Either for both. Scouts, right? Scouts. Okay. Good morning. <sighs> Welcome to Grace. They're, the scouts are doing amazing things. They had a booth, the uh, our Sea Scout uh, ship. It's called. It's not a troop. It's called a ship. Our Sea Scout ship had uh, a booth at the farmers market this weekend as a fundraiser, and they they did they did well. We did lots of recruiting, so we're hoping to have even more wonderful scouts here with the ne for the next year. And the other scouts are getting ready to go to camp. There's lots of camps available, and they are trying to make every single one they can. <laughs> and they're having a really good time doing it. Planning's coming up for the coming year. There have been some changes to the Cub Scout uh, events and things that go on in a, in a Cub Scout year. So we'll be working on those. The coffee hour is going today. Thank you, Pat and Nancy. So do come over and enjoy some lunch and some fellowship. And there is a sign-up board for coffee hours uh, for the next three months on the bulletin board right by the kitchen. So consider doing a coffee hour. It does not have to be elaborate. It can be bagels and cream cheese. It can be as, as big or as small as you want. It can be a box of donuts. That's perfectly okay, too. So please consider signing up for that. Also, Saturday Sextants will be resuming the third Saturday. There will be a list of things to do. We can always use people to help do them. I will be publishing the list of things to get done. So if you can't make it on Saturday, maybe you can come during the week sometime in an off moment and, and pick up a couple of the, the chores that need to be done around the church. We got all the air conditioning fixed, including the church. And so we are good to go for the warm weather. Have a blessed week. Okay, there's a number of things I want to mention. Um, Vacation Bible School is next week, so if you want to, I don't know any details on that, but get with Nancy on that if you want to help or volunteer. Um, we will have some visiting priests. I'm working on that, and Canon Betsy is helping with that. Um, sh Canon Betsy, Canon to the Ordinary, Betsy Randall will be... Uh, our priest here the first Sunday in August. Um, Reverend uh, Clyde Glandon, he's in Tulsa. He will be coming the third Sunday in August. I think that's the 18th. Um, if you want to volunteer to be the officiant and or to do the homily, talk to me or Laura. Um, we're kind, we have kind of a schedule already filled um, through the end of August. Um, but so beyond that, let us know. Um, reminder to the vestry that Canon Betsy will be meeting with the vestry tomorrow evening at 5.30. Um, she'll be talking to us about our priest search and getting ready for that. Um, Canon Buchanan will be zooming in um, to talk about the financial part of that. So um, also, um, the official office hours here at church are Monday through Thursday from noon to 4 p.m. If you have any time during that period of time to volunteer to be in the office, uh, let me or Nancy know. Um, she's going to work on a list of things that need to happen, and BJ as well. BJ's in the office a lot too, but just to, during this transition to have somebody there that can answer the phone, file, do, you know, whatever needs to happen then. Um, there's uh, structural engineers coming tomorrow at 10 to look at the bell tower. So I'll be here to meet with them and I have questions before they get started. So Alex Wilson is helping me on that. Um, and that's all I have. So thank you guys for being here. It's very important during this time that you come to church because we're all in this together. So, thank you. All right. Okay, so um, any birthdays or anniversaries today? One in the back. All right. <laughs> 
come on up. In how many years? Twelve. Twelve? Oh, nice. That's a good amount of time. <laughs> Anybody else? No, nobody? Well, everybody watching on Facebook, if you have a birthday or anniversary, we're going to say this prayer. So let's pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when, they dis when they're discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fail. And in their heart made your peace, which passes understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh man, congratulations. Welcome to you guys. Awesome. Congratulations, Scott. Good job. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions and may be best, that may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Um, let us bless the Lord. Be God. May the God and hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Change. We have a little change in the uh, hymn. If you'll turn to hymn 671, we're going to sing Amazing Grace. Okay. <laughs> 